You know how many people nowadays like to wear trackers like this one to track their steps, their sleep, and their heart rate? Well, what if I told you that there's one biomarker that affects your energy, your mood, and your long-term health more than any of those metrics? And most people have absolutely no idea what's happening with it. I'm talking about your blood glucose. And before you click away thinking, I'm not diabetic, this doesn't concern me, hear me out. So I just spent two weeks wearing these continuous glucose monitors stuck to my arms, even though I'm not a diabetic. And yet I walked away with results that totally blew my mind and changed the way that I look at the food that I consume. In this video, I'm gonna show you my actual glucose data from both monitors and reveal which foods shock me the most. And trust me, some of these will actually surprise you. Plus I'll break down which of these two monitors I think is actually worth your money. By the end, you'll know exactly whether continuous glucose monitoring is something that you should try. So why did I do this even though I'm not a diabetic? Well, here are some stats that might shock you. One in three American adults has prediabetes, and 90% of Americans have some kind of metabolic disorder. We're talking about almost 300 million people walking around with blood sugar problems that they don't even know about. But here's what really got me interested in this whole thing. Your blood glucose is not just some diabetes thing. It's like having a window into how your entire body is working. So prior to this test, I thought I was pretty healthy. I try to walk around 10,000 steps a day. I lift weights a few times a week. I eat mostly keto, but man, I love my carbs. And about a year ago, I had this scary moment when I thought I might have gestational diabetes. While I technically passed both of my tests, my numbers were way too high for comfort. So that's when I started thinking, you know what, I should really start to figure out what's actually going on with my blood sugar. So I went on Amazon and I bought these monitors with my own money. This is not some sponsored thing. I just genuinely wanted to know because as you start to get older, it's, uh, it's pretty important to know where your blood glucose stands because that's something that can really impact you going forward. It's also something that you might be able to reverse, but you have to catch it in time. So here's the crazy thing. Until literally this past year, you could not buy these continuous glucose monitors unless you had diabetes and or had a prescription. But now the FDA finally approved them for sale without prescription. So two of the most popular options are Lingo by Abbott and Stella by Dexcom. And you can buy them on Amazon like you can any other gadget. And these aren't just some knockoff toys. They're using the exact same technology that diabetics have been using for years. There's actually a tiny needle that goes under your skin and it stays there for around two weeks, constantly checking your blood sugar and sending everything to your phone. Pretty wild, right? And if you're curious, applying these doesn't hurt even though there is a needle, as long as you apply it to the correct part of your arm. I accidentally applied my first one to slightly to the side, and I think it actually went into part of my muscle because it actually did hurt. But my second monitor, when I applied it directly under my arm to this, you know, slightly fattier part here, like it hasn't hurt at all in the past two weeks that I've been wearing it. But anyway, I decided to go all in and test both of these glucose monitors at the same time. And while they do pretty much the same thing, the experience of using both of them was so different. Lingo has this really sleek modern app that looks gorgeous, and it sends you real-time updates when it comes to your blood sugar. The actual device also looks way more subtle on your arm too. But here's the thing, you can only buy one tracker at a time, and it lasts for about two weeks. I also noticed that Lingo was showing these crazy extreme readings, like super highs and extreme dips. And these readings honestly started to freak me out, making me wonder if I had a problem. So that's why I decided to test a second glucose monitor, just to see if its readings would be any different from Lingo's. So part of my health routine includes taking a bunch of daily supplements. My multivitamins, my bone and joint supports, collagen, and recently I found out that when you take your supplements actually matters. Like collagen, for example, is best taken on an empty stomach in combination with vitamin C to be most effective. So for me, that means taking it first thing in the morning, but meanwhile, it's best to take fish oil, zinc, and my multivitamin when I eat food. So it's always hard for me to remember to take my supplements at the right time. Uh, enter this product. So this is by a company called Wan Me. This is the T5 Smart Pillbox. 
Now it looks like a wireless microphone system or you know, a pair of earbuds, but it's cleverly disguised as a pillbox as well and a reminder. So this is the main device itself. And if you open up the flap, you see the earbuds in here. So the earbuds, they wrap around your ear and they are actually really effective. Like they actually work like earbuds and they deliver surprisingly good sound. I've been using them a lot to listen to podcasts or audiobooks while I'm doing chores around the house and uh, they work great for that. But the hidden uh, compartment in this is right here. So down here is a little drawer that pops out and it gives you one, two, three, four, five, five slots to store your vitamins or also your medication. And so you can customize this however you'd like. And I love that it is so discreet. Like once you put it in here, like you almost have no idea that it's part of this earbud charging case. So I can opt in for reminders in a couple of ways. I can do vibration alerts, voice notifications, or push notifications in the phone app. Uh, personally, I prefer the vibration alerts because it's the most discreet, but also effective. So think about it. If you're somewhere like at work or you're traveling on an airplane or you're out with friends and you need to remember to take your vitamins or your medication, then you can just pull this out. You know, everyone's going to assume that it's your wireless earbuds. And if you ever need to access your pills or your vitamins, they are right down in here and you can do it so subtly and discreetly. It gives you complete privacy while ensuring that you're sticking to your health routine. So the Wanmi T5 launches in October, 2025. And honestly, whether you're taking daily medications or just trying to stay consistent with your supplement routine, like me, this is worth checking out. I'll put a link in the description below. Thank you Wanmi for sponsoring this video. Now let's go back to talking about my first impressions of the Stello glucose monitor. So I picked up the Stello and right off the bat, I was really impressed that it came with two trackers for a whole month. And also it has this AI photo recognition, so it can look at a photo of your food and tell you exactly what you're eating. I mean, look at how obscure this photo of a BLT sandwich looks. And boom, it nailed it in the description. This made it so much faster and easier to record my meals, which is something that both apps encourage you to do so that you can look back and see how what you ate affects your glucose levels. But for all of the good, Stella was not perfect. The app design looks a little dated compared to Lingo, and Stello only updates your glucose data every 15 minutes instead of constantly. Plus, the actual tracker requires attaching the sticky film on the outside to make sure that it actually sticks. And it just looks way messier and more noticeable than the Lingo tracker. I mean, this one just expired, so I've been wearing it for two weeks, and it honestly looks pretty nasty because of the sticker. But I will say that based on how stable and consistent the readings were, I think that Stello is probably more accurate than Lingo. But Lingo definitely wins when it comes to user experience and the overall look of the tracker. And besides some of its extreme readings at times, I do think that on the whole, their data was mostly tracking on par with each other. All right, let me show you some of the results that completely changed how I eat. So the obvious things really hit me hard, like white rice, which is probably my favorite carb. It sent my blood sugar so high that it literally went off the charts in the app. But here's where it gets really interesting. So one time I had rice as part of this Greek plate with lamb and all of these other proteins and fats, and my blood sugar spike was only 131. When I ate rice by itself, it went to 170 and above. Similarly, when I ate fresh pasta that was cooked in fats like butter, bacon, whole eggs, and cream, my glucose did spike, but it only got up to 135 rather than going way off the charts. So it seems that eating carbs with healthy fats and proteins seems key for keeping your glucose from spiking too high. Portion size also makes a huge difference. Eating two slices of pizza got me to 133. But when I ate four slices, it went all the way up to 167. So it's kind of like your body is keeping score based on how much you eat. But then there were foods that totally caught me off guard. Beets and carrots are some of my favorite vegetables, and they're supposed to be healthy, right? But it turns out that they can spike your blood sugar pretty high. And don't even get me started on the hidden sugars. Throughout this experiment, I started reading labels of foods like crazy. And even my favorite seasoning and my snack had sugar in it. They're trace amounts, but still, it goes to show that savory does not mean that it's free of sugar. 
But then there were also pleasant surprises. I had dark chocolate for breakfast one day. I'm a big fan of these Honey Mama raw bars that are made of honey, coconut, and chocolate. And each time that I ate roughly a third of a bar, it barely moved a needle until I had a tofu banh mi sandwich for lunch, and that sent my blood sugar through the roof. But beyond food, there are hidden glucose triggers that you probably aren't even aware of. I mean, I certainly wasn't. I had this really stressful day with my kids once where I literally started crying, and my glucose shot up so high just like I'd eaten a bowl of sugar. And another night, my baby kept waking me up every hour. And the next morning, I looked at my numbers, and they looked terrible, even before I ate anything. This whole thing made me realize that monitoring your glucose isn't just about what you eat. It's about your entire life. Now look, I'm not a doctor. This is just me sharing what happened when I tried this experiment. And blood glucose is super important, but it's not the only thing that matters for your health. If you start to track your glucose, it's also important to eat as you normally would. I had a really hard time doing this at first because the perfectionist in me didn't want to see my numbers start to go up in the red. But honestly, to do this properly, you've got to take an honest look at some of your favorite foods and see how those affect you. So even though I think a two week test period is fine for now, I can see myself repeating this test every quarter or so just to see the long-term impact of my diet and lifestyle changes that I'm making now. I'll also say that I personally think it's important not to go to extremes. Your glucose levels shouldn't be the sole metric that you use to pick out your foods and your lifestyle. I found that out when I started to cut out all sugar, but then I ended up consuming a lot more salt and possibly avoiding antioxidants and nutrients that foods like fruit can give me. So finding balance is really important. So after wearing glucose monitors for two weeks, here's what I learned. Your body is totally unique. What sends my blood sugar crazy might do absolutely nothing to you, which is why it's so important for everyone to do these tests for themselves rather than rely on general guidance and advice. It's also not just about sugar. Stress, sleep, when you eat, and all of that matters just as much as what you eat. Finally, early prevention beats trying to fix problems later. If you can catch this stuff early on, you can totally change where your health is headed. And the coolest part is that this technology used to be locked away for people with prescriptions only, but now anyone can try it, so you might as well. If you're over 30 and you care about optimizing your health, I honestly think everyone should try continuous glucose monitoring, at least for a little while. It's like having a fitness tracker, but instead of counting your steps or your sleep, it's tracking the one thing that affects literally everything else about how you feel. So have you tried using one of these continuous glucose monitors? If you did, what surprised you the most? I seriously read every single comment, so let me know down below. And let me know about any other health trackers out there because I've been testing out sleep trackers, activity trackers, now glucose trackers. So I'd like to know what else you guys think is interesting out there and what I can test next.